The following is intended for mature audiences only. Discretion is advised. Pillow fight, pillow fight. This is so fun. Oh, pillow fighting. Why is it so fun? Pillow fight. You're listening to Pillow Fight, a comedy and culture podcast hosted by me, Yamanina Bimaram. I've invited a guest or two to come and gossip like we're at a high school slumber party. We'll start off with a little game of Fuck, Mary Kill, where the choices are buzzworthy moments in pop culture. Then we'll move into a couple rounds of Would You Rather based on world news. We'll finish the night off with some juicy truth or dare. Feel free to grab a friend and play along in this pillow fight. Pillow fight, pillow fight. This year's made of goose. We got feathers flying everywhere. Mine's made of goose. This is so fun. Pillow fighting. Why is this so fun? Pillow fight. Today on Pillow Fight, I have Audrey Black and Sammy Sanchez with me. Audrey's a college senior and comedian who I actually met on TikTok. She's an incredible stand-up comedian, writer, tweeter, and all-around fun gal. You can find more of her on Twitter at AudreyMB underscore and on TikTok at AudreyM.B. Sammy is one of Audrey's best friends from home. He's also a college senior, and this is actually my first time meeting him. In his own words, Sammy isn't a comedian. He just has a bad attitude. (laughs) In this episode, we cement our hatred for the Sway Boys, we freak out about technology, and we take a good, hard look into the Conway family drama. Fuck. Mary? Kill. Fuck, Mary, kill. Yeah, I guess we'll start with the fuck, Mary, kill. So I did meet Audrey on TikTok, and Sammy, you said that you have a very weird TikTok feed of people that nobody knows. So I thought I'd make all of these like a little bit TikTok related (laughs) Um, because it is controlling all of our news right now. So the first one is that TikTok star Addison Rae is set to make her acting debut in a gender bent remake of She's All That directed by Mark Waters. And we have never seen her act, so it could be fabulous or frightening. We don't know yet. Uh, number two is that Bryce Hall and Blake Gray, who are members of the Sway House, are facing criminal charges for throwing multiple parties during the pandemic. Los Angeles Mayor and Petty King Eric Garcetti has turned their power off in the Houses of Punishment, which I think might be his first good decision this year. Um, <laughs> And the last one is, I've never heard of this girl before this news, but apparently she's Tana Manjo's roommate, so she already has to be a little wild, but Charlie Jordan traveled to Rwanda in the middle of a pandemic to do guerrilla conservation work and got a false positive COVID test and then made like a really weird TikTok where she basically slammed the entire country of Rwanda for her own dumbass and was like crying about not having weed with her in her isolation cell. So to recap, the three fuck, Mary kill options are Addison Rae starring in a movie, the power going off in the Sway House because of their parties, and Charlie Jordan versus the country of Rwanda. I don't, I don't really know any of those people. Um, <laughs> I spend like, I spend like four hours a day on TikTok right before I go to bed. So you would think you I would know at least some of them. Um, I see Antifa Greg Hefley a lot. You know Antifa okay. Greg Hefley. <laughs> Sorry, Sammy's like beyond upset. Like I think Sammy's his biggest fan. He's this he's, kid he's so cool. who looks like Greg. Oh wait, no, 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 no. You know what? Actually, uh, that people, uh, they recently came out as non-binary. That was like a really recent development. Oh, so all I did not gendering them. I didn't know that until very recently. But did did they call themselves Antifa Greg Heffley, or did you give yourself give they, them that name? They just kind of look like the kid who played Greg Heffley in the movie. Okay. And they, they just kind of use that to get followers okay, and then I, explain like radical leftist theory. That's kind of I I respect that. <laughs> we looked at each other's likes, and mine were all like like I love the mean gay men of TikTok, and like uh-huh. mine are all like them making memes that Sammy didn't understand, and yeah. his was literally all like 
jail TikTok, and then that one guy who dances to the same song with different energies. <laughs> it was like scrolling through, and it was like ten of this man um, doing like full energy or like full uh, body but low energy in the face, and so he was like losing his shit. Okay. Well, whenever one pops I up, I have about. to watch like eight of them. I got to see which ones I've missed. Yeah. I see a lot of memes about the 2008 financial crisis. <laughs> It's like dad TikTok. Yeah. Oh, I still got to answer the question. <laughs> yeah, I think I can go first if you want to ruminate. Yeah. I think I would definitely kill the Charlie Jordan versus Rwanda battle because I watched the video and it's like so stupid. Like, regardless of what happened, she's like, nobody speaks English here. Like, she was like, she was bashing the entire country of Rwanda for her own like stupidity of traveling to Africa in the middle of a pandemic. Um, and yeah, she just seemed annoying. So killing that situation, um, between Addison Ray and the Sway House drama, I think I would marry the power going off in the Sway House. I think that was like something that gave me a lot of, actually, no, no, I would marry Addison Ray in a movie because everyone's really mad about this. Okay. Everyone's really mad at Addison Ray in this movie, but this has always happened. This is not anything new. TikTok is new and TikTok stars are new, but like, Famous people's kids starring in movies despite having no talent or no past acting experience always happen. And like, I think like all these people want is money and Addison's Ray is going to bring them a shit ton of money. So, you know. They don't care that it's good. They've already got the fan base. Yeah. Yeah. They just need her to bring in money. And I guess that's a good economic decision. So I would marry it. Um, and then I'd fuck Power Goes Off in the Sway House. It's like, like a flirty back and forth of like hate sex. That's what's kind of going on there. Um, Eric Garcetti is just like, I've had enough and I'm gonna take something away from you. And I'm sure they're gonna like write a diss track about him and that'll be fun. So yeah, that's what I would do. Um, Addison Rae is like one of the people who dances on TikTok, right? Yeah, in addition um, to other nonsense. She, is there like anything, anything wrong with her? Is there any reason why the marriage wouldn't work out? Because I feel like you gave me reasons why I wouldn't enjoy being married to the other two. Um, I mean, like, I think... She's definitely really dumb. Yeah. Like, there's a video of her, and, but I think she's well-intentioned. Yeah. There is a video of her where there, she's talking to, like, some Sway House boy, and he's like, oh, this girl's Asian. And she goes, no, don't say that. She could be Korean. Like, that girl has nothing. <laughs> and she also, parents. like has been accused of some mild racism. Uh, so she probably wouldn't want to marry me. I don't know. <laughs> she, she's, she's seen with lots of diverse characters. I don't think it's like, a, I don't like non-white people. I think it's like a microaggressive type of racist. Um, well, I think I could just marry her and be like a trophy husband. Uh -huh. Like, I would still like to be able to live my own life and do stuff, but, like, she could be, like, my backup plan. Like, if everything yeah. doesn't work out, then she can support me. Yeah. She can fund some of my fun projects. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't have to worry about them making a profit. Yeah. Um, I think I would... I guess I'll marry the... Or not marry. I will fuck the gorilla person. <laughs> the gorilla person. <laughs> I'll fuck the gorilla person just because I don't know I mean like that's not great but I don't have to like hang out with them after right <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm killing who who the other the sway boys I just don't like that those syllables together I don't <laughs> know what that means <laughs> why, why do they call the sway boys? their house is the sway house they named it that. S W A Y. Yes. Did they explain why? Um, I think they no. just thought it sounded cool. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm definitely killing them. <laughs> yeah, respectable. Okay. I think I have to kill the girl that went to Rwanda. Um, I just—it's so fucking annoying. Like, <laughs> ever, I watched that video, and she was literally crying about like not being able to smoke weed, and also. She was claiming that like Rwanda was like really behind on tests and stuff, but they they aren't. Like I'm pretty sure America's actually been slower. Yeah. It's just that she like 
yeah, you have to quarantine if you come from America right now. I, I'm yeah. pretty sure it's the situation. So, like, also she really misrepresented it, which, like, I just think is stupid. Um, uh-huh. And then um, I think... I think I would... Hmm, I would marry the concept of their... Um, power getting shut off. I, I love that a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, I find them all insufferable. Mm-hmm. Um, they're, they, they creep me out. They look like Sims to me. Um, I don't, I don't like their, their, their weird dances and their bad attitudes. Um, and I, I think it would be very funny, um, if they continue to have conflict with the mayor. I think that that's, I think I, that brings a lot into my life. Just it's a good bit. Horrible. It's amazing. And the, the so thing is, cool. is it's a really good bit happening to people who don't understand what a really good bit is, mm-hmm. um, which I really appreciate. Um, so, yeah. And then um, I'm really excited to see Addison on the red carpet because she can't dress herself. Um, she has <laughs> like, so put together true. some of the worst outfits. <laughs> and I like, I feel like I, 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 I have, I'm down for people to dress pretty weird, but like she, like the other day she was just wearing like, clearly like a men's like dress shirt and then a massive chunky belt and like doing a dance and then one time um she was just in leggings and this weird sleeveless like green and blue top I think you know the one and yes. then she did a TikTok later where she was in the pool wearing that shirt so is it a pool <laughs> shirt or not <laughs> she like, she gets like these really nice pieces probably from these mm-hmm. brands but then she just puts them on like her like sweatpants Yes. It's really, it's like high and low to the extreme. I'm also excited to see her mother show her up on the red carpet. Yeah. Because I think that woman, that woman knows how to dress and she's What's her working. mom's deal? Her mom? Her, <laughs> she's like this beautiful, like 50 year old who makes, also makes dancing TikToks and also makes thirst traps. <laughs> and she's like, like together or she has her own account? Uh, both. Um, and she has these like Crossover. piercing blue eyes, like to the point where I I have to wonder if she if they're natural. Like it, she looks like a, one of the, one of those dogs, like Alaskan Huskies, like with their blue eyes in the snow. Like she she looks supernatural, um, and she could dress herself. We. I also think there's no way Addison's a good actress, and I I derive a special joy from seeing her just say the dumbest stuff in interviews. Uh-huh. And I'm I'm really excited to see her have to do like. Um, interviews for the the promotion of the movie. I, I think I think that'll keep me going for at least two weeks. There's gonna be a lot of like bad bleep content from <laughs> that. Yeah, I think that um, Addison Rae's mom is wonderful. Like I am obsessed with her. She's really iconic to me. Audrey and I were just talking about. So there's like rumors going around that David Dobrik, the YouTuber, had like a fling with Addison. And he made a video where it's, like, him telling her that he actually, like, has a girlfriend, so she, like, needs to stop bothering him. And then uh, Addison's mom pops out and is like, it's me. Get gone, bitch. I don't know who David Dobrik is either. <laughs> He's like, Okay, I'm going to be honest. I don't really understand who he is either. I just know that he, like, has the hype. Like, everyone's always like, David, mm-hmm. give me a Tesla. Why does he have a Tesla? Why does he have so many Teslas? Who he is has he? so much money, I think. But it's from social media, right? He didn't, yeah. he's not just like one of those people that like becomes an influencer because they're already rich. No, I think it's from social media. He used to date um, another YouTuber and like they had a huge thing and they had a huge public breakup and that was a whole thing. Um, the one time I've been on Addison's Ray, Addis, Addison Ray's side firmly was her whole shit with Bryce Hall, the sway boy from the story. We hate them. Yeah, we do we hate, hate them. them. And I was, I was like, he's publicly in interviews going around, like saying all this shit about how like, like he's, he'll never be with her and stuff. And clearly like they were, they were going around town, like going on dates, holding hands. And if I were her, I would be like, I would be salty. She's also like incredibly beautiful, like way better looking than every single one of the Sway Boys and the Hype House Boys. Um, Like to, to an absurd degree, like. I'm still only going to watch Antifa Greg Headfleet. <laughs> yeah, that's what... <laughs> I mean, if, if that's what you have, you shouldn't go back, backtrack into the... The big update was that 
a while ago, Sammy was like, Audrey, Audrey, like Antifa Greg Heffley he finally got to change his username. Because when you spell Antifa Greg Heffley and you don't put like an underscore between Antifa. Oh yeah, they had to oh. add it. <laughs> and I guess you can't change it for like a month or something. It says anti F for, oh yeah. my God, oh <laughs> no. Would comment and be like, hey, did you mean to do that? And they'd be oh, like, no, no. I can't change it for a while. So I was yeah. pretty happy for them once they were able to. It was really it. exciting for them when they finally got to stop getting called a homophobe. Oh my gosh. That's so, that reminds me of when I was a kid and on Webkins. I had a dog named Butterscotch, but they wouldn't let me name her Butterscotch on Webkins because it had butt in it. And my friend Cassidy, her name has ass in it, and they wouldn't let her use her real name because it has ass in it. So my dog Butterscotch was named Sandy on Webkins because I like was too like anxious to look at Butterscotch 1T. Like I couldn't do that. So I just gave her a whole new name. It was Sandy. She like went by her middle name. <laughs> yeah, that kind of thing. Like at home, she was Butterscotch, but at school, she was Sandy. <laughs> that was what it was. But did you hear that Charlie D'Amelio has her own, like her own Duncan drink? Charlie, Charlie D'Amelio. Yes. How do you say that? A while ago, Sammy goes, Audrey, I finally need to tell you this. Like, you've been definitely saying her name wrong <laughs> for months. He was like, I didn't care enough to tell you, but well, I was like, thinking, I don't want to correct you because I don't know who she is, but you've <laughs> typed it out. So I feel like I know how it should be said. What were you saying? She was I was saying, saying like, it was two words. She was saying, like, a, like, there was a like, there was a period there. In Charlie, Charlie D. Amelia. <laughs> yeah. But it's D'Amelio, and I see that now. I thought I was like, no, of course I'm saying it right. And then I, you know, I reflected, and I. I didn't want to correct you because I wasn't. I didn't know her, so I didn't know if she just said it weird. But then I found a video where they say her name. <laughs> yeah, he, looked, he looked it up. Anyway, I did go to Duncan to try her drink, and really? it is. Yeah, I did. <laughs> my friends and I were bored and wanted to go to Duncan, and I was wow. like, Wow, you've been. Influenced. I know what we should do. Yeah, and then it's exactly the coffee you would expect a, like, 16-year-old to drink. Like, it's incredibly sugary, but it's pretty good. Um, but the fact that she drinks it every day, like, I was, like, zooming around after <laughs> I drank it. I don't think coffee yeah. does anything to me anymore. I drank like three cups this morning, and then I was, like, felt nothing. <laughs> yeah. So I was just, like, I guess I'll continue with my day since I'm not going to gain anything from this. His caffeine yeah. intake is genuinely terrifying. Like sometimes I'll get coffee and I'll be like, oh, this is probably gonna be too much for you. And he'll be like, Audrey, this is not even like half of what I drink every day. And it's yeah. it's like it's an amount of coffee that I think would kill me. Like I think I like I think that I would die. Okay, so this is what I usually this is water, don't worry. Okay. But this is normally I drink coffee out of this a lot. I normally fill it up like depends what I'm going for. At least once. If I really need to get going, I'll fill it up three times. Three times, big. and that's yeah. like a normal size tumbler. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's probably like, like it's probably like yeah, twenty ounces. Is that what you mean when you say you drink three cups? No, not this morning. That was three <laughs> mugs. But this is like this is my like I have a ton of homework Holy and I need shit. to power through. That's a pretty that's a pretty See, big cup. coffee doesn't do that for me. Like I don't feel focused. In fact, I feel like my body wants to go everywhere. Like I want to dance on the walls. My brain is like, where the fuck am I? Same. I was trying to cook lunch yesterday and I could not like do it at all. Like I had something on the stove and then I went to get something from the fridge and I was like, what was I doing before? And then the, the thing on the stove like completely burned to a crisp. And then I like started like freaking out and then I was like, what was I doing? I didn't even deal with the stove thing. That's like what coffee does to my brain. Oh, I don't think it makes me more focused at all. I think I would just be like passed out 24 seven. I think it's just the one thing keeping me conscious. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that's fair. Yeah. Definitely keeps you awake but that's my main struggle yeah. yeah wait so you said you just found out about charlie d'amelio so what are your initial thoughts on her um my main thing i knew about her was that audrey was saying her name wrong that's all i know <laughs> uh doesn't she have a sister or something right yes dixie dixie, dixie d'amelio um i saw a tiktok video where it was a girl and she was like which of the d'amelios would deport me 
Um, and so definitely goes, Mark. She goes to them all and she goes, Mark. So her, so the D'Amelio, the father, is a Republican state senator, I think. I don't know what exactly. He's some sort, yeah, actually. He's some sort of political affiliated person. He's Republican. And so she's like, of course he'd deport me. And then she goes to the mom and she's like, well, the mom is married to Mark, like probably has the same values as him, but like she seems like a kind, like motherly figure. So she would deport me, but she'd give me like a week to pack my belongings and say my goodbyes to my friends and pack me a box lunch for the road. And then she goes to Dixie and she's like, okay, Dixie is probably the most Republican of them all. Like, I don't need to explain this. Like, she is from Connecticut and is wealthy and chose to go to the University of Alabama. Then they showed like a map of the US and it was like blue at the top and then red like down by um, Alabama. And it was like, she went from here to here <laughs> willingly. So she has to like that. <laughs> um, and then it was like, Charlie, like probably the only one who wouldn't deport me. Like she would be my friend. Like she would support me. Yeah. She just seems like a nice girl. I just, I just hope I want the best for her. Mm-hmm. <laughs> How are people seeing this entirely different part of TikTok that I'm seeing? Like, <laughs> when you first got TikTok, what were you seeing? I didn't like it at first because the algorithm didn't know what I was into at first. It was a lot of dancing videos, and I was like, I don't want to see dancing videos. How did you oh, get well. into Antifa Greg Heffley? Um, I saw. I saw like one video that was like a three-parter and I was like, okay, uh-huh. well, I gotta go back. I saw like part three. So I was like, well, now I got to go watch the first two parts. That's how they get you with the part videos. Yeah. And then I was like, this is really educational. I should yeah. definitely <laughs> yeah, should when, watch hours of this before going to bed. <laughs> when I first downloaded TikTok, I was getting like Jason Derulo videos mm. nonstop. And yeah. then I literally went to the search bar and typed in gay. Mm. And that's how I started getting more content that I want. <laughs> like, I literally typed out gay in the search box. Would you rather, would you rather, would you rather? Let's play a game of would you rather? So we've been talking about TikTok news. And TikTok itself has also been in the news because of data privacy issues and such. And I was talking to my friend earlier today, and he recently reminded me that Grindr also had to sell its ownership to an American company because of China and data privacy issues as well. So I want to know, would you rather have some Chinese server, like, reading all of your TikTok data or all your data from, like, whatever dating app you most frequently use? I think... I don't know. I feel like if they read my TikTok data, they'd be like, this girl, this girl likes weird weird senses of this she had a weird sense of humor they read my dating app they just be like she needs to text these people back <laughs> <laughs> because i'll match with people and be like good for me and then they'll message me and i'll be like oh no <laughs> i think i think i would want them to look at my tiktok stuff just because you know they talk a lot about targeted ads and stuff i'm not seeing a lot of ads that i'm enjoying i feel like i want them <laughs> I want them to know because there are things I want to buy out there. So if they can get me the right ad, it'll probably work. And I yeah. just think they're going to know me best through TikTok. So I'd like for my targeted ads to improve. It's crazy that TikTok's algorithm is so accurate, but its ads are very inaccurate. Yeah. Twitter also does a very bad job at targeted ads. I was talking about this today. I get so many like draft kings, like manly sports ads. And I'm like, why are you thinking this is what I want? Like in, Instagram is very good about targeted ads. So is Facebook. Instagram does show me what I want to yeah. the point where I know they are reading my like conversations with my friends in, my, yeah. in the DM, you know? Yeah. I feel like they have a microphone on. Sometimes I'll be like, do you want to go grab some McDonald's and I'll see a McDonald's ad five minutes yeah. later. Yeah. I have a friend. Out loud, not over text. I have a friend who had Invisalign and we would talk about her Invisalign all the time. I don't know why. It was just the topic of the week. And I started getting ads for Invisalign. Okay. <laughs> I don't have Invisalign. Last summer, I was subletting an apartment in LA while I was having an internship there. And I was living in a room with this girl. And she had this brand of skincare that was clearly like from boutique place. Like it wasn't something that you would find at like Sephora or Ulta or anything like that. Like I'd never seen it before. I never asked her about this brand. I never like talk to her about where she got it I just only noticed it in the bathroom while I was getting ready and I noticed that she used it as soon as she left 
the apartment like moved out I was there for like two weeks longer than her I started getting ads for that brand and we never ever spoke about it so you think they like implanted you with a chip maybe they knew I was sharing an IP address with her and when she left the IP address like the, the things that she was searching and things that she was using were oh, no longer mean. being like thrust upon me so they needed to do that themselves because I've also noticed like if I've gone to like a friend's apartment building like when I was in college like I'd go to like, a friend's apartment building and when I would go to the building Facebook would suggest me to add friends with everyone else who lived in that building that's it weird knows where I am and who else is frequently there and I heard that like some like once like someone was suggested their like one night stand that they don't even get the phone number of to be added as a Facebook friend because like they shared the same IP address the night like for one night. I was actually I was watching a documentary right before this. I didn't get to finish it because we started doing this. It's on Netflix called The Social Dilemma. You guys heard of it? No. It just came out, but it's like about like the amount of information they're able to find out about you. Mm -hmm. And it's like, they don't even need actual information, like stuff like, like they don't need to listen in on you. They have enough information to predict what you're going to do. And it's just as accurate. Yeah, I think I would rather them have my dating app data because TikTok, I think is too, like too accurate with the algorithm. Like it knows exactly what I'm thinking all the time and always shows me that. And I don't, like, I think it's too scary. I mean, they already have it. Like, they have it. But my dating app data, it's like yours, Audrey, except no one messages anyone. There is just matching and no messages. <laughs> I don't talk to anyone. <laughs> it's just like a game. <laughs> I don't like talking to people on dating apps, but then I still have them. So I don't I don't know what that's about yeah. at all. Couldn't tell you. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's just like an ego boost to know someone, like, would match with yeah. you. Yeah, I do get sometimes. Do you ever see someone and you're like, oh, obvious match, and they don't match with you? And you're yeah. Like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's Maybe fine. I just never saw you. Yeah. Well, yeah. you say that. You can give yourself the benefit of the doubt. I could do that, or I could take it really personally. And, um, you know, I, it's more I, fun to take it personally. It's more fun to take it personally. Sometimes I'm even like, oh, like I'll give this person a chance. Like they're not. They're not exactly attractive to me, but like they could be if I knew them and then they don't like me back. And I'm like, fuck you. Like I, yeah, I'm I know my you. way for you. <laughs> uh, like I was, oh, I was going to settle for you and you don't, you don't even like me. Yeah. What? Crazy. My friend Jeremiah was like looking at my Tinder and he was like, you get hotter people than me. Is that like, because you're hotter than me? Is that a thing? Yeah, Tinder Tinder has a ranking. Do they have an algorithm too? Yeah, Everyone no, they have. An you so can't escape it. I read an article about this a while ago because I thought it was really interesting. So basically, they have a secret number for you. Like if you went to the TikTok database, they could tell you your exact ranking, um, but they they will never release that information. Um, but the person who wrote the article, like because she didn't she did an article about it, they let her see her number. And basically, they do rank you on a scale of one to ten. But it also has to do with how active on the app you are and how often you swipe right on people. Because if you're like Maybe they think you're like a five because they see that other people that they've ranked like in similar ranks are swiping on you and other people that they've ranked higher aren't swiping on you. But then if you use the app a lot, they might bump you up a couple swipes because then there are other members that might swipe on you, get that engagement. But yeah, no, it's it's fully, there's fully a ranking and sometimes I get hurt is by it, it. Like, <laughs> Is it the kind of thing that like it's based on a bunch of compiled data or is it like one person goes in and assigns you a number? I think guy. it's, I don't think it's like one guy sitting in the it's, office being like, this one's it's, a it's, 10. It's one really objective guy. <laughs> yeah, this no, he is, he's They so can just beautiful. really trust him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't, this reminds me of like that community Meow Meow Beans episode or like the Black Mirror right. Nose Dive episode. Yeah. That's really scary. I like was believing that there was some sort of way that they just kind of knew like if more people swiped on you than usual then like you were shown to more people that were swiped on more, but I didn't know there was like a number. Yeah, my understanding, and, and they like have a decimal, it's like a decimal thing. And I do think it changes depending on how active you are. But like if a bunch of people that they view as like 10 swipe on you, your number gets bumped up and you get shown more attractive people. Doesn't TikTok also have a number for attractiveness? TikTok does also filter, not necessarily attractiveness, but they have admitted that they've like, 
kept people off the for you page because they're like they don't want fat them to be or people of color or like visibly yeah. queer they say they don't want them to be bullied yeah. but they're so bullying right. them yeah <laughs> yeah but yeah they're the bullies they're like we are, we're we the just, only ones who want to do it we don't want you to get excluded so we're just gonna go ahead and do it before <laughs> it happens we're gonna exclude you instead of like your peers doing it you know exactly yeah. who's doing it mm-hmm. yep 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 yeah wow technology is so evil I really like do you ever think about like like maybe one day we'll just I'll just wake up and I'll be like a, a cave woman and this is all a dream like I kind of imagine just I want to I like like I think I want to be a hunter gatherer I think it would be a lot easier I think which one well uh I don't think I you get to do this. both <laughs> I I think I'd rather be a gatherer um, I don't think I have the like life or job experience for hunter. Um, I think if I was a hunter, I would accidentally kill a person. Like I just feel like and they would have to like retire me from the hunt or hunt me. I don't know. Um, I feel like it could get. Yeah, maybe it's not a great idea for me. I don't know. I. I think I would have liked to have been around like right when farming became a thing. Mm-hmm. Just because like you're only farming for like ten people at that point, so it's not yeah. that hard. There's not a full field. You mm-hmm. just got like your little garden to yeah. grow like barley or whatever Just feeding your family <laughs> yeah. yeah and like a 13th century peasant took in what like maybe a fifth of the information or so we take in like five times the information in one day that like a 13th century peasant took in, in their entire life i think i'd be a lot happier if i didn't know no things. things yeah i think totally. <laughs> i think life would be a lot better if i just had no information about the world yeah and i was just like yeah potatoes my therapist is always like yeah like try to avoid things that make you anxious and I'm like living makes me anxious like everything I constantly hear and know makes me anxious so there's no way to avoid it you can yeah. still farm potatoes you don't need to be like I just feel like if I farmed to... potatoes people would ex- but I still would know about yeah you can like, farm potatoes but you'd still have this you know you, can you go still off would have a little robot potatoes. I think a lot about going off the grid I think I think I might. I <laughs> it does have a certain appeal to me. Has your screen time been abysmal lately? Because mine has been. Actually, I think I'm on my phone and on and sleeping equal parts of the day. Yeah, it's probably true. Yeah, I mean, I, I gotta get on my computer to do homework or class, and then I finish the the work computer and I move to the fun computer time. Yeah. And that's just my yeah. life. I've been I've been watching like Netflix on my phone and stuff now too. Mm-hmm. So I'll be too lazy to open my computer. Like that's how lazy I'll get. So that is affecting my screen time on my phone drastically. Yeah. You know? Because if I watch like a few hours of Netflix before bed, that's like many hours of screen time. I turned off those notifications that say like screen time's up twenty yeah. percent this oh, week. Yeah. I was like, you don't need to tell me. I already, I already know that. Yeah. Oh, have you been following the Conway family drama? Oh, I have been yeah. following that. Yeah, yeah. So even my dad is, even my dad is following that, and he yeah. doesn't know anything. He is like talking to me about the TikToks. But um, would you rather be Claudia Conway or Kellyanne Conway in this situation? Oof. Oh, both are so bad. I'm since I am worried about Claudia. I yeah. don't whatever's going on, I'm I'm incredibly suspicious of the whole thing because it does not make sense to me that she like obviously I'm glad she just has her internet connection and is like able to communicate with us, but it does not make sense to me that like given her proximity to the president and like confidential information and like one of his informants, they have just like not sent her to a boarding school and taken away her phone. Like I don't understand. How I don't she think that'll still work. Posted. Like, she'll start using, like, a friend's phone or yeah, something. Yeah, because she was doing that for a while. Like, they did take her phone away, and she was using her friends. She made, like, a second account, too, right? Yeah. yeah. She's the daughter of one of the president's advisors, and she's, like, it's so, it's such a weird twist, and I, I, I'm, i like, confused how it's happening. I also she feel still like getting she's... getting emancipated? Is that... She said she was. But I don't know if she actually is. She keeps tweeting at AOC being like, adopt me. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know. I feel like she's definitely, I would not want to be her. But I also, Kellyanne Conway's life is so awful. Like, her husband was running a um, 
like he, he was running the Lincoln project for a while, but he just stepped down. So like, she was like going home every day to her husband who was running a campaign against her boss. Like that's, and then, and then now her daughter like publicly hates her. Not that I feel bad for her cause she kind of had it coming, but I wouldn't want to be her. So I don't know. I obviously don't agree with Kellyanne Conway, but I feel like I could discipline a child better than she's been doing. <laughs> I feel like I could be like, Claudia, these are our rules. Like, <laughs> calm down. Uh, I want to know like, how the other siblings are handling this. Because she's like the Are there other siblings? Sibling. She's like the yeah, oldest she's got, or something. She's, yeah. And she has a cousin who's now also posting stuff about fuck Trump. <laughs> But the cousin looks like 14. I'm like so concerned for this family. Yeah. Well, she's 15, right? Yeah, which I always, I feel like that's so young. I forget that she's that young. Like she looks older than that. But yeah, yeah. my brother's 16 and I feel like he is like not at that like teenage angst level, you know? She's got a lot of reason to be angsty though. Yeah. Yeah. No 15, 16 year old needs to have like a national platform. Yeah. Like, it's not good for anyone at any age to have that level of a platform. I don't think like, yeah. How many like really public figures seem like they're okay. You know, like I don't, they're not living in reality for sure. No. Um, but I do think, I don't think I would ha- want to have to talk to Trump. So I think I would prefer to be Claudia. Um, and I, re- I feel like also if I were her, I would absolutely be behaving the way that she's behaving. <laughs> Yeah, like I think that is exactly. Sammy knew me, when, knew me when I was that age. That's exactly how I would have responded to that kind of <laughs> that kind of pressure. It's like publicly disgracing myself mm-hmm. on the internet um, and fighting with her, like airing all my dirty and laundry. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh my yeah. god. I think you reach just an age where you're like, not everyone needs to know everything that is happening to me at all times, and mm-hmm. that's definitely not until like at least late high school. Yeah. Like if any, I think it happened to me like mid college. So <laughs> yeah. 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 I think I would also be Claudia because I think like knowing that you have this like army of people who support you yeah. would make me feel better. I think Kellyanne is like deeply miserable with herself, whereas like Claudia is miserable with her situation. True. Truth or dare? Uh, Sammy, truth or dare? Um, truth. Okay, who's one celebrity that you, like, never want to see naked? <laughs> it's kind of hard, because some, t- some of them, like, you'd think would be the answer, but then you'd be like, that'd be, like, a great story to tell, right? Uh-huh. Be like, yeah. oh, I saw Paul Giamatti fully naked. <laughs> yeah. Can I, I guess what about. it's going to be? Yeah. Is that allowed? Yeah. Yeah, I, I think he's gonna say Dan Schneider, <laughs> like the victorious iCarly guy. <laughs> Does Dan Schneider qualify as a celebrity, or is he more of a true? <laughs> but he would more work with the answer to this. More of a starving artist type. <laughs> he has such a foot fetish. I I saw a meme once that was like Dan Schneider, Quentin Tarantino, like handshake <laughs> feet. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna. No, look. that guy is. That guy's got some. Um, I'm going to look his face up. Because he's not famous enough that it would be funny if you saw him. Oh, my God. I did not know that he looked like this. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Hey, if you're listening to this, I suggest that you Google Dan Schneider image right now. Yeah. Um, I picked Chris Evans because, as you know, or might not know, he recently had a dick pic leak. And I've chosen to not look at it because I respect him. Right. Okay. Oh, so now you don't want to ever see him naked. You got to make, you, you got to say, not only will I not look at his leaked nudes, but I'll actually make a promise right now to never yeah, want to see him, him naked. naked. Exactly. Wow, that's the moral high ground that you've taken. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. Beautiful. Um, Audrey, truth or dare? Truth. Um, how do you suspect you'll die? <laughs> I think you're going to kill me. <laughs> I feel like we've known, Sammy and I have had a deal for a very long time that all, um, that, what, what, what exactly is it? We change it every once in a while. I'll kill you and then you'll kill me. 
Yes, he's going to kill me and then I'm going to kill him. Most friends make marriage packs, but he <laughs> made a killing pact. No, I say this all the time. Like, me and my best guy friend, you know, we made a deal that when we turn 25, if we're both still single, we'll go into the woods and kill each other. <laughs> 25? That's young. That is young. It's coming it's up. I gotta count my time. <laughs> Wait, how are you gonna kill each other? Like, how is that gonna work with timing? Well, I think the joke is that uh, the idea is that he's gonna kill me and then I'm gonna think I'm gonna kill him, but I'll be dead. Well, but, I've, already, I've already got my plan. That's up to you. Yeah, but is it a surprise or are you gonna it's tell me? Maybe like you have you. to poison him like five minutes before he plans to like stick I, I do feel back. like my method would be poison. Um, what would your I method be? I think it would be? probably have to be poison just because you're pretty small. I'm not yeah, I don't think. Small, but my size is probably enough that if it, if it got physical, I could probably beat you in a fight. Yeah. Oh, well, Sammy says I'm pretty murderable. I'm, I'm pretty small. <laughs> um, yeah. I think I, it's good to remind her that she's pretty murderable because it's going to keep her alive. Yeah. You should know <laughs> that it'd be easy for someone to kill you, and that's going to make you make smarter choices. <laughs> He reminds me of this all the time. And to be fair, I've never been murdered. Yeah, you can say that. You yeah, are one of the welcome. only ones that is alive. I can say <laughs> <Yeah>. that. <laughs> not many of us can say that we have not I know, been I know. Yamini, to truth or dare? I'll do a dare. Okay. Um, what if you, what, I dare you to DM that woman you're in love with on TikTok that makes the cocktails. Okay. Okay. What should I say to her? Hmm. She's replied to my comments before. For those who don't know, there's this woman on TikTok. Her username is Spirited LA. She is this like classy, classy lady who makes gorgeous cocktails while wearing gorgeous outfits. And I just feel seduced by every single video. Yeah. Um, I think, I mean, would you be opposed to DMing her? I feel seduced by every single video. Probably, right? She has a husband, um, <laughs> doesn't she? Yeah, she does have a husband. I, okay, this is a funny little story. So I have a friend who also is in love with her. Like we're both in love with her and we always talk about her together. And for his birthday, I wrote him a fanfic in which the two of us seduced her together. <laughs> And I included pictures of like her face in a bar, like us sitting there. <laughs> this is so embarrassing. But I wrote him here and he was like, this is the best birthday present anyone has ever given me. And it was like, the story was like, we were, she lives in um, Portland, Oregon. And mm -hmm. we were like, we just decided like about a year from now, like say COVID's over, we're taking a trip and we thought it'd be fun to go to Portland, Oregon to make fun of like white liberals. So it'd be like a fun time. And it's like a silly, it's like a cute place, but also we have fun making fun of people. And so we go and, you know, we get in and we decide to like go out for drinks that night. We don't, we've already eaten dinner, like on our way back from the airport. So we're just going out for drinks and we're just too busy chatting it up that like she, we don't notice the bartender. We're just too entranced and catching right. up. But the bartender like slips us our drink and I, we look up to be like, thanks. And we're like, it's Hannah, her name's Hannah. And then we start chatting with her and we ask her like, what's there to do in Portland? Like, what do you like? And like, she starts chatting with us too. And like, we're just like back and forth. She keeps like going to attend to other, other customers, but then like, coming back to us. And then we like stay until the bar closes and we're like, oh, like it's so fun talking to you. Like maybe we should like get lunch or something, you know, like while we're here, like with you, like that'd be fun. And she's like, no, like you guys should just come over for like, I have some wine like whatever and my friend's like oh I'm getting kind of tired like I came in from New York and like the time difference is getting to me and I'm like no like I have to like pull him aside and be like no like this is what we're gonna do we're gonna go to her home and we're gonna like see what happens like if you don't take this offer you'll regret <laughs> it and it's this beautiful dark smoky home her husband is away on a business trip and she asks us if the two of us have ever hooked up and we're like like we made out in college sometimes like for fun like joking but like you know never no never for real and she was like oh would you be opposed to doing so again and we're like we're like if the right situation comes along and then <laughs> we all sleep together in a giant king bed okay um right. 
what what has to happen for you to send her that story? Because <laughs> I kept forgetting this was a fictional story. Like I would go do <laughs> it. You painted such a picture. And, and I'd be like, what happened next? <laughs> <laughs> and then what? <laughs> Like, did yeah. you guys do it? <laughs> yeah, like, wow. Um, yeah, but what should I do? Yeah. <laughs> I am not damning her that full story. That yeah, I think like, that I actually get, would be harassment. I'd get blocked. I don't think you do it. <laughs> yeah. I, think, I, would, I would say I feel seduced by your videos. I don't feel bad. That's not even technically sexual. You're talking about no. I feel like that could be like the artistry of it all. To be fair, it's really more about the aesthetic of it. So Mm -hmm. we have like mutual people that follow both of us on TikTok. Maybe just like I'm really into your videos. Like, what's up? You know, just just something ambiguous. I don't know. I think it's about time you made contact, though. You've been talking about her a lot, and you did write an entire fan fiction about her. That's true. Okay, I should say I love your videos so much i'm gonna say they're all so classy i feel seduced by them because i feel like that is there we go that's good i think nice middle ground nice middle ground between you know (laughs) yeah okay that's that's i I, I appreciate that the story maybe if we do make contact one day she'll listen to this podcast and she'll hear this yeah and and she'll be like oh fuck (laughs) (laughs) okay the message has been sent Yay. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Gorgeous. Okay. All right. Do we want to do another round or is it just the one round? Yeah, we can do another round. Let's, I'll, we'll do it in reverse. So truth or dare, Audrey? Dare. Okay. Go to your notes app. Okay. Go to the fifth entry. Okay. Tweet it and leave it up for an hour. What is it? What's on that? A list of like things I needed to get. And it it includes Pat. (laughs) Well, now you got people to make sure you do it. They're going to keep you (laughs) I think that's that's a perfect thing to randomly do. That could have been way worse. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. Fine. <laughs> I I just recently also like followed a bunch of people from the comedy night the other night. I thought they were funny, and then they followed me back, and I was like, "Oh, so I think they think I'm like a real comedian." And you want me to tweet cotton pads, coat hangers, dishwashing soap, cords, air freshener, toothbrush. <laughs> I do, and I think this could honestly be really good. I think that you think it's a bad tweet but sometimes the things that you don't plan to to land well no one's gonna think no one's gonna be like hey, i'm waiting to like it <laughs> this reads like a poem cotton pads coat hangers <laughs> dishwashing soap clorox toothbrush pads. it's because i was going to cbs <laughs> i'm gonna retweet it <laughs> wait i'm gonna i'm gonna quote tweet it i'm gonna say go on queen <laughs> all right all right um <laughs> sammy truth or dare truth sammy um if my dad <laughs> had to let one of us die <laughs> no, 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 that was, I think I, mean, I, I know the answer, answer if you want me to jump in before you're done <laughs> no 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 okay if my dad got an all expenses paid trip, which one of us do you think he would take? Um, so I hope your dad doesn't listen to this ever. <laughs> I don't uh, think I don't think he will. He does seem to like me more than you. <laughs> I I am the son that he never had. Yeah. And you know, if you only have one son, a little father son time, I think he would bring me. Yeah. What would the trip be? Like, what kind of trip do you think? Would be? Oh, I feel like um, you would want to go like fishing. You know, something like some you could something specifically. It's like a father son thing. You know. Yeah, maybe like I feel like he would maybe paintball. I feel like he would he would take you to do paintball. Oh, I don't want to do paintballing. He might. I might say no, so you can go then. Oh, thank you. No, my dad like what is what was it like May fifth like two years ago called Sammy his son and we celebrated as a holiday. Um, wow. is when Sammy entered the family. You know, my dad loves Sammy. He just called he's, me. He's, he's I got, just walked he's in just... and he was like, there's my son. And I was like, okay. 
I don't know if I agreed to how this. Did, how do your own parents feel about that? You being adopted by another family? To be fair, uh, his mother treats me like a daughter. Okay. Um, because she, she like has she's like a very feminine like loves girly things and like always wants to do girly stuff and she has three boys Mm -hmm. and so I remember there I feel like there really was a specific moment where like I started hanging around their house and she thought we were dating for the longest time and she finally realized that like we weren't dating and that meant I wasn't gonna go away and like the light that was in her eyes like and (laughs) and she like now she like texts me she actually um she really wanted me to come out to her, I think. I, like, I just don't, like, don't... I, it was also a few years ago, and I just Wait, didn't, so like, like talk. so, like, she to knew, but... Well, that's the thing, is that I just, like, couldn't figure out why she... She kept bringing up um, my ex, who uh, was a couple years older than me at my old girl's school, but trans, and so, like, she would talk about him all the time. And I just, like, didn't understand how she knew we were connected, because I, I like, I thought it was, like, she knew we were friends or whatever. And she'd always be like, how's he? And I would be like, oh, he's good. I mean, I don't know. Like, he's good. We're friends. Um, she always just kept, and then sometimes she'd like talk about gay rights to me and stuff. And I'd be like, yeah, they're great. But I just like, don't, I don't know. At the time, didn't like talking to adults about that stuff. She, I'm in New York working for an LGBT company. And like, she knows this. And on the day of world pride, she texts me, what are you doing today? (laughs) And then of course, like, I finally am like, I think I need to like, she obviously suspects like, because of all my extracurriculars that she knows about that are very gay that I should just tell her. And I finally, and Sammy's like, oh, I told her you were gay years ago. I told her you were gay and that, like, your ex was your ex, like, years and years ago. And this whole time, I've been like, oh, like, oh my God. She, she, was, she, was, she was like, what? She was like, uh, you can't have a girl in your room. And I was like, no, 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 no. <laughs> yeah. I don't understand. Oh, truth or dare? Um, um, I'll do truth. What's the most embarrassing thing you've done in the past month? Oh, okay. This is a good answer. I feel like I don't get embarrassed very easily. Like, I pretty much laugh most things off. But when I was doing that Zoom comedy show on Friday, um, I was trying to message someone that I actually knew in the private messages of the chat saying, hey, cutie. But I ended up messaging someone else. <laughs> And their username was like, like what was it, Coochie? Oh yeah, uh, Coochie it was like Cruncher, Coochie Crush, Coochie. It was Coochie something. It was something about Coochies and like it was a Coochie person. And I messaged them, "Hey, cutie." I didn't realize for a second, and then I was like, "Holy fuck!" Like I was trying to send someone else, but then it was like fine because she replied and she was like, "Oh, I didn't even notice your message. Like I was trolling for a dick on my phone. Like I'm not even paying attention anymore." And I was like, "Okay." <laughs> that's fine but I was like mortified for a second like it would have been like it would have been like very publicly like sliding into dms of like this woman was much older than me like she was like an adult so it would have been weird um no I don't think like actually embarrassing yes like I posted a really deranged video of myself on tiktok pretending to be Hagrid oh I loved that video (laughs) yeah it that was a Terry. My hair is starting to look like Hagrid. That's why I felt like I could do it. Like I'm, I have so much. So, but people didn't like it as much as I did. So yes. So yeah, I think with that we can wrap up. But it was really fun to have you guys on. It was really nice to meet you, Sammy. Yeah, nice to meet you too. Via the internet, I hope that you learn much more about Charlie D'Amelio and find. Um, you should watch some of sherry addison's mom's videos yeah and, i'm gonna get you guys on my side of tiktok yeah i mean <laughs> I, think, Greg Hesley. I think i'm on there a little bit like i have i have this like hot girl who puts on hot outfits and she just like like points to things like leftist text that appears on yeah. the screen like that's that's the kind of like leftist world i'm in it's mm-hmm. like still it's still hot girl hot girl yeah. tiktok but yeah um sammy said i think it's most effectively summed up by the time I was like looking at his for you page and a video with only like 70 likes showed up <laughs> so it was like clearly for him you know and it was just these old men <laughs> it was like four old men like smiling at the camera <laughs> <laughs> and like singing a song and they were like clearly they just like so old and like I think they might have been like camping or like having a barbecue like they were outside yeah and they were like doing a little dance they were having a good time <laughs> They're like the kind of people Sammy wants to hang out with. Yeah, you should DM them and ask for an invite to the next time. Yeah, I will. 
Thanks so much for joining our pillow fight. See you next time. Pillify is a production by me, Yamini Nambimadam, with music by Greer Baxter. Thanks for listening.